Hello and welcome to the finals of Grand Prix Houston. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Luis Scott Vargas, and we have an awesome matchup here. Owen Turtonwald, currently ranked number one in the world against his teammate, Andrew Cuneo. Both players play for the Pantheon. They both test together. They know each other well. They're friends, and uh, they find themselves facing off, trying to win eight pro points and $10,000 to the winner here. This would be Andrew Cuneo's first Grand Prix victory in all of his years playing Magic. This would be the first time that he is able to take down a GP. Owen, on the other hand, this would actually be his fourth win if he's able to get it. He's got two individual wins, and he also has a team-limited win with the Peach Garden Oath. Yeah, he actually, they defeated us uh, en route to that victory. Lead cast in Soul Artifact on Ornithopter. I remember <laughs> that. He, t he had a crazy deck. I I wouldn't even say it was that great. It was just oh, like I, I wouldn't either. If it hit <laughs> right, though, it was he, he, it was very high uh, power level for sure if he hit his mana and, and everything came together, and it did for him. Okay, here's a Jace Friends Prodigy now from Cuneo. He can rest pretty easy about that. I mean, there are some things that can happen, Reflector Mage or whatever. But as far as removal goes... The rally deck's not really in the business of, uh, of trying to actually kill your creatures. So that, that Jace could be play a big part for Andrew Cunio here. Yeah, and Jace is one of the better cards against rally. Not, not because Jace himself specifically hoses rally, but because Jace is a very powerful card and the rally deck doesn't have a ton of ways to interact with it. <laughs> Owen does have... His option of what to play here uh, looks like he's going to play uh, Catacomb Sifter, I believe. He has a Reflector Mage in hand, but it's not clear that he can he can cast yeah, the, the Mage based on his current. Like, he couldn't fetch for an untapped white source given his the first two lands he played. Interesting, too. He's got two copies of Rally of the Ancestors in his deck. Still no white mana, though. But I don't think he's that worried about... Uh, finding white. Otherwise, he would have maybe used the Polluted Delta to find a Prairie Stream at some point later in the match. But actually, it looks like he's just forced to do that, th which maybe not he's not too happy about. He does have two rallies in hand, currently has no more lands in hand, and no white sources in play. He does have Collected Company, though, and between the Sat Catacomb Sifter Scry and then Company finding you know, cards like Elvish Visionary, perhaps, or Jace, Owen's probably going to be able to find white by the time he actually wants to cast Rally. Okay. Yeah, he's got a Reflector Mage as well, so three cards with white. And Cuneo's going to immediately roast the Catacomb Sifter to make sure that there's no scries happening. You see that Owen does not sacrifice his Scion. He wants to keep that up in case he misses his land drop so that he can still cast Collected Company here. And a Tassiger is a follow-up play for Cuneo. So things working pretty well here for Andrew. That does mean that Jace is going to stay in creature form for a while, but as you mentioned earlier, it's pretty safe that way. Uh, Owen drew a Pluto Delta, so he could actually go Prairie Stream into Reflector Mage. And just bounce Tassiger. One of Tassiger's weaknesses is oh. that you you double bunch for Tassiger and then he gets bounced. It's pretty hard to recast him. Yeah, Tassiger's stock has gone down pretty sharply with the advent of Reflector Mage. He's been downgraded to Tassiger the Silver Fang, <laughs> <laughs> the Copper Fang, <laughs> <laughs> Bronze Fang. <laughs> yeah, he is going to be hanging out in Cunio's hand for a while here. It looks like. Well, Owen might may be casting Rally because he would, or not Rally, Collected Company because he would fetch Purge Stream either way, mm. and it is high reward if you cast Collected Company and you hit a Reflector Mage that does end up better for you, or do you just go for the guaranteed win of just casting a Reflector Mage? I mean, he can he has some life total to play with. He has a blocker. It's not like Tassiger is just going to kill him. No, and he's not getting tons of damage through if he plays Reflector Mage either. Right. I especially, could, I could definitely see him just playing the company here. Especially knowing that Andrew's got two Disdainful Strokes in deck. I would kind of be tempted to just cast Collected Company here, but uh, we'll, we'll, let's see what Owen does. Actually, Owen could also cast Zulaport Cutthroat, so he could go Zulaport Cutthroat, sack the, the Scion, or, and, or whether he attacks or sacks, it doesn't matter which order because he gets one damage through from the Scion no matter what, and then and then play Reflector Mage. That actually yeah. turns the tables for that me. That is what he's doing. And there's Reflector Mage to put Tassiger right back into the hand for Cuneo. He's even going to poke in there for one damage with Visionary before passing the turn. A lot on the line between these two. Again, the winner's going to win $10,000.
and a lot of pro points. Now, Owen wants those pro points because he's looking to extend his lead on player of the year. He could make a run here in the second half of the season and actually get to the point where he puts himself in a pretty safe spot for player of the year if he puts together a couple of nice tournaments like this one and something else. And he could win two players of the year. That, that does not happen very often. No. And Andrew really looking for a fourth land here. He's, gonna, he's got Gideon, which is very far away from casting. Looks like he has Kalidus in hand as well that he can't cast. So he's yeah, going to find some lands the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, this doesn't advance his board, and he's kind of under pressure. One of the things, you know, we've watched Owen in the feature match a lot because he's been winning a lot. And you see him getting a decent amount of damage through with just his, like, motley assortment of creatures. Simeon does have, it looks like he might have his copy of Duress in hand, so now he's going to sack Bloodstained Mire. That's the one land on the deck that can't, or one fetch land that can't get white, yeah, so he might as well sack the, price that one to get the black source instead. And he's going to be happy that he discarded that Gideon because he's still miles away from that. All right. Duress you. Well, that did not work out super well for Turtenwald. He, he made a really nice little play there, but he is going to lose, well, a collective company or a rally here. He's going to yeah, lose. It's going to be company by a mile. Yeah, there's only one creature in the graveyard currently. And Owen can't cast rally, That's and right. he's got two copies of it. That so was big. Yeah, that that can't be feel, feel great for Owen, especially since he doesn't have uh, much he can do. He drew a swamp this turn, so he still can't cast rally. Not that he would even do much. Get in there for four. And he draws. He doesn't get to drop cast. Andrew down to seven, but if Andrew's got a Kalidus, which I believe he does, then he can. He, he can play Kalidas next turn, and all of a sudden Owen's attack squad becomes minimal. And actually because Andrew's got a fetch land, he could also play Tassiger as long as he he's able to get black. And since it's a Pluid Delta, he, he's going to be able to. You mean Tassiger in addition to yes, Kalidas? Yes, it's going to be the fifth card in the graveyard, the, the fetch land. The downside to doing that is Andrew's then again not fetching. Or he's actually got triple black. So yeah, he can fetch Prairie Stream even. So... Andrew can kind of have it all, and he's, he's opting to flip Jace first here. He also drew a roast for the turn. If there's anything relevant there, I suppose the cutthroat is your biggest offender. All right, here comes Jace, turning into a planeswalker. Is this Cuneo turning the corner on this game and trying to... Oh, that duress, I think, was the whole the was, whole thing. It was because huge, right? by casting duress, Andrew meant made it so Owen couldn't advance his board, which not, not only makes it so that he doesn't increase the pressure now, it also just makes those rallies weaker later. Owen can't cast rally. He, he's unable to find a way to, to get the second white right now. And I think Andrew not only turned a corner, but is actually just really far ahead right now. Okay. Yeah, Collected Company is a, a very powerful card, and when Owen went from having one to not having one, he went from winning the game to losing the game. There's Cletus. Like, Owen can't even come close to attacking right now. Andrew now has a flip Jace, a Cletus, and a Tassiger. Wow. Yeah, that was a massive swing. Let's see if Owen can find something. He found a Catacomb Sifter off the top. That at least can get around Cletus to a minor extent because the Eldrazi Sign, again, it's non-token, won't get affected by Cletus' ability, so that will trigger Sifter and Zulaport Cutthroat. But still, Andrew now gets to untap with Cletus and play. It's game one, so he knows Owen's not, you know, not going to be killing Cletus anytime soon. At best, he's bouncing a Reflector Mage. Andrew can go like Soulfire Grandmaster, Roast, get a zombie, gain five life. <laughs> just like, he, wow. he can just do it all. Looked like this one was going Owen Turtonwald's way early, but now it looks like Andrew Cuneo's game to win here. One of his key main deck cards, Kalidus Trader of Get, against this deck. Super powerful, and here it is, Soulfire Grandmaster. Now, does he roast the Sifter here? Yeah, that's what he's going to do. So he's going to roast the Catacomb Sifter, force Owen to react to this. Owen might sacrifice the Eldrazi Scion. I mean, does he need to hit in order to scry companies here? Or like, what is he? Company into Reflector Mage is going to be his best option. But Andrew gaining five life off that roast makes things a lot harder for for Owen. 
I think Owen's going to opt to like maybe block the Kalidus with the Eldrazi Scion and sacrifice it to prevent Andrew from gaining life. Owen could actually could throw the team in front. Block Kalidus. Well, no, I think Andrew actually plus the Jace on the Reflector Mage. So yeah, gotcha. that was yeah, he's he not attack he Kalidus point until it exactly which card. Yeah, but that must have been the case. All right. So he is going to block and then sack. Grim Hardaspect's not <laughs> not going to work very well with Kalidus in play. Yeah, Kalidus is completely dominating this board state right now. Grim Hardaspect does come down. Hit the battlefield for Turtenwald as he passes the turn back, but now there's a zombie on the side for Cuneo. He still has the board state from earlier, and Jay's still rocking and rolling as well. Cuneo also able to play Crackling Doom here, force the sacrifice of the Harspecs. Though, if <laughs> Cuneo wants, he can shrink the Harspecs with Jace to force Reflector Mage to get sacrificed instead. Not, sure. not saying that's more appealing, but it is an option. Marshall, uh, do you think that this game is going to come down to a Jace ultimate? <laughs> no. No, I don't think it is. I know you want that to happen. I don't think it's going to happen I don't for believe you. it's too much to ask to, to utilize all the abilities of the very powerful Planeswalker, Jace. Jace what? Telepath Unbound. <laughs> yeah. I was w that was a setup. I, yeah. I wanted you, you to ask you me. You got me. <laughs> no, I don't think this is going to come down to ultimate. I think that uh, Andrew Cuneo is firmly in the driver's seat here, and I don't think he's going to need to mess around with things like that. And you can see... Yeah, this game is actually going to end very, very soon, yeah. well, well before Jace Ultimate. Okay, so Turtonwald can gobble up one zombie with a Reflector Mage here. Or has he already used Jace on it? Yeah, he may have. Take 10. You go to 3. I gain 2. Oh, excuse me, I gain five. 5. Yeah, the Reflector Mage was... Uh, hit by Jace there, so the zombie survives, and that's going to do it for game one, because Turtonwall just drew a land. He can cast Rally now. He yeah. can get back a Catacomb Sifter. He can get back a <laughs> so single, solitary Catacomb Owen Sifter. Owen can't win this game. He can not lose for a turn. But right, and I so Owen decides, he agrees with you, I can't win this game. I'm going to scoop him up, and Andrew Cuneo is now one game away from his first GP trophy. He has been playing the game for a very long time. This would be an awesome moment for Andrew if he can pick up one more win against a very tough Owen Turtonwald. All right, players are going to start consulting their sideboards. And we're looking at, uh, yeah, as, we, as we've seen before, a bunch of different ways to, to answer Rally and Collected Company. Andrew did have some of the main deck ways, and actually we pointed out that the main deck duress in Andrew's deck could be impactful, and in fact, game one, I think he, he really swung the game by casting Duress there. Hello, everyone. Joining you again in the booth, this is Gabby Spart. So, Luis, what do you think uh, these players are going to do post-board? Uh, I think that the main the main part for Owen is looking at what Andrew can do to answer his deck, because uh, Owen is, is the deck that poses the question to every other deck, mm -hmm. right? Rally is like, hey, you need to answer Rally, you need to answer Company, or the synergy there is just going to overpower you. Andrew kind of snuck some of those answers to his main deck. We saw him win game one largely on the back of Duress and Kalidus. Mm -hmm. And all Andrew can do is kind of reinforce that post board. He's got two more Duresses, another Disdainful Stroke. And really, he's just going to negate. He's just going to kind of lean on those. Owen does have answers. He's got three Murderous Cut, and he, he, he thinks that that's his best sideboard card overall. Mm -hmm. So he's clearly going to bring those in. Whether he wants to bring in Duress or Dispel or what combination, I'm not entirely sure because... Mm -hmm. He has six total. He doesn't want all six in the deck, but he wants some number of them. Right, and I think in that match we saw the power of Kalidas, right? It was <laughs> it was very strong, very strong against the deck. Yeah, it, it really shut down Owen in multiple ways. First of all, it made it so any future rallies were less good because mm -hmm. by f exiling everything. It's also a pretty fast clock because it gains Andrew three life a turn, deals Owen three a turn. Once he starts making zombies, those start attacking. Right. We haven't actually seen Kalidus eat any of the zombies, but he does have the <laughs> ability of devouring a vampire or zombie to get plus two, plus two. It's true, the very, the the very little used ability. And how bummed were you that that match didn't actually come down to, or the game rather, come down to uh, Jace Ultimate? Oh, it <laughs> seems really <laughs> unlikely that it would come down to a Jace Ultimate. Like, I'm not expecting to see that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Sure. Pretend like I wasn't <laughs> just here listening <laughs> to the whole thing, but um, the players are shuffling and getting ready. 
Andrew Cunio leads at 1-0. Uh, let us know in the chat, are you on Team Owen or Team Andrew Cunio? This is for the finals of Grand Prix Houston. Do we want to see Owen get his fourth GP win or Andrew his first? It's so his first? Yeah, he has Andrew has four top eights and uh, currently doesn't have a GP win. Owen actually greedily has three GP wins oh. already. So he oh, that's greedy now. <laughs> <laughs> I I have to admit I kind of want Owen to win just because he he called a shot though, as has been pointed out he does call a decent amount of shots. Wait, what do you mean he called a shot? Before oh, did he say he was before win the round Grand Prix? one he said uh, I'm sorry due to circumstances beyond our control Grand Prix Houston has been canceled and we award ten thousand dollars in eight pro points to Owen Turtonwald. <laughs> he said that on Saturday before the Grand Prix started. I was gonna say doesn't he call a couple of shots though? He does he he he. The thing is, it uh, he, it's not like he calls a shot one every ten Grand Prix. He sets it a little bit more frequently <laughs> than that. So uh, I, I, I can't give Owen full credit for the called shot, but it, it still would be pretty funny. So based on how the game is going and with Andrew being up a game, um, who do you think is actually likely to win here in the spot? Do you think Owen gets significantly better post-board, or is this just you know something that's going to favor Just Guy ultimately? Andrew's built his deck to be good against Rally, mm -hmm. and the fact that he's up a game, first of all, the fact that he's up a game and they're playing standard, meaning Andrew is a favorite. Mm -hmm. There's not very many matchups where that wouldn't be the case. I do think post-board, uh, Owen does gain a little bit just because Murderous Cut is very good, but mm -hmm. overall, Andrew's deck's well-constructed to face Rally. He beat Rally uh, in the first round of the top eight. He <laughs> defeated Brock Parker, mm -hmm. and he beat Rally on his way here as well. So both players have chosen to keep their seven, so we're going to get a match of magic here. Uh, Owen's going to crack that windswept teeth, and I think we saw just the top line for Cunio so far. And Owen's going to be the first on the board with, uh, I believe, an Elvish Visionary <laughs> to, to, to start bringing the beats. Let's take a look at Cunio's hand. It looks like he has... Nice looking hand. He's got a couple lands, enough spells. Looks like we're going to get a good match of magic here. Rally the Ancestors is a draw from Elvish Visionary for Owen. Yeah, Rally is funny. It's the, it's the draw that you always want to see. You always want to see the card Rally, but you don't really want it in your opening hand. In fact, against a deck with Duress, you kind of don't want it in your opening hand. You'd rather ha it be, you know, about eight cards in or so. And when I'm not mistaken, I think I see a Duress over in Cunio's hand. Mm, maybe yeah. peeking on the right. Yeah, he's got, he, he's got a Duress, and... He doesn't have to cast it this turn. He knows that Owen doesn't have any cards he can play on turn three with uh, that, that he would really care about, mm -hmm. that he could duress. He's just collected company and rally are the, are the main hits. Well, in many ways, he, he wants to just give Owen as many chances as possible to actually see that card before he can try to take it. We've seen Dress whiff so many times this weekend. Yeah, it's a, it's a great card. It only costs one mana. It gives you a ton of information. It takes one of their key cards, but the downside is sometimes it misses. Mm -hmm. Jay's Vince Prodigy is Andrew Cunha's play. Pass back to Owen. One of the things we noticed in game one that I like is uh, o o Owen, Owen uh, you know, gave Andrew some respect. He did not attack Elvish Visionary into Jace. <laughs> 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 I think I'd be more inclined to attack just for value, but it, it, it both players know there's nothing Owen can play that, that makes that attack <laughs> <laughs> interesting. O o Andrew would, in fact, block. Respect, I can respect the chump check if it happens, even though uh, this is the finals of the Grand Prix. I can see this. <laughs> against his friend and teammate. <laughs> yes, against <laughs> his friend and teammate. Uh, something like that's probably not going to fly. So one has a couple of options here. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh After all that. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Though, uh, actually, technically, there is a card Owen could have boarded in that would make that, uh, that block bad, which what is, is Minister that? of Pain that you can exploit oh. to give all of Andrew's creatures minus one, minus one. So Owen did make the, 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 the technically correct play by attacking with Elvish Visionary. So it wasn't just a message. It was actually a, g a good sort of message to send. Well done, A plus Owen Turnwald. Andrew probably doesn't expect Owen to board in Minister of Pain, does no, he? No, I think that's a good block. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so here's a dress, and Andrew was waiting until this turn so that he could uh, take exactly, and there's the Rally of the Ancestors both the only option and manages to take it out of his hand. Yeah, and he's he's timing it, as you said, to this turn precisely, hoping to hit Collected Company, but he'll, he, he's fine as long as he hits. Taking a rally also works there. So Duress to the yard, and let's see what Andrew Cunio can do this turn. He can play an untapped land and play a two-drop. I think he has a Soulfire Grandmaster in hand. He could have also gone Shambling Ven, but this way he actually gets to get on board. 
Yeah, you really want to time your, your Shambling Vent and your other tap lands, so they're not really costing you two mana. Because if you played it instead of playing a two mana spell, that's a little bit worse. But playing Soulfire Grandmaster here at least gives Andrew the possibility of attacking back. Oh, there's actually a Roast in his hand, so he could Roast on Nantuku Husk if he wants to this turn. And I think that's what he's going to do. Here we go. Roast takes down that Nantuku Husk and a pass back to Owen. Strategically leaving the Jace ready to block Elvish Visionary. <laughs> Though Andrew could have flipped Jace and plussed it. Interesting. If he'd flipped Jace and then plussed it on Visionary, it would have been the same, except he would have ticked, be ticked his Jace up. So I guess he's trading some points of loyalty for a little bit of life. Well, either way, the visionary doesn't deal damage. So unless he's oh, not true. unless yeah, he's right. not planning on using Jace, which I guess he I guess he's what he's interested in doing potentially here is using dig through time to make it so that he doesn't have to flip Jace. Huh. I guess I guess that's not the case. In any event, a catacomb scepter for Owen Turnwald gives him a little nice bit of fodder, and Andrew's gonna flip his Jace right here. The draw's not looking so good for uh, Andrew here as he just took a look at Owen's hand knows that there's no non-creature spells for now. Yeah, a Andrew's unlikely to want to recast Dress. He's now leaning on Disdainful Stroke. Mm -hmm. Though, you know, his mana base is, is, is a thing of beauty. He's got double black, double blue, <laughs> double white, plus red spells. So it is difficult for Andrew to, to balance the fact that he needs to cast all these different cards and you see like mountain plains plus two blue black duels <laughs> which actually does cover every base except Gideon and Gideon seems like a card you'd be very easy to board out in this matchup. So Soulfire Grandmaster is a play for, for Andrew and a take up Jace and the pass back to Owen. Looks like Owen found a Sylvan Advocate. And he here Andrew has enough cards in his graveyard that he can cast Dig Through Time end of turn. He also gets to keep Disdainful Stroke up though because Owen knows about the counter spells in Andrew's deck, he's unlikely to like main face collected company here. Here we go. Two Elvish Visionary draw cards and then Tuka Husk. Husk is good. H Husk is one of the cards that let Rally pressure the opponent without playing Rally or Company. And that's important because when your opponent has Hallowed Moonlight, Duress, Dispel, Disdainful Stroke, all these cards. You want to be able to beat them even if they draw their sideboard cards. And Intuko Husk, uh, you know, in concert with the other creatures in the deck, does a pretty good job of that. And here we get to take a look at the trophy sitting right next to the players. Whoever takes this gets to take home the trophy and $10,000. And Tuka Husk is a play for Owen Turnwald. Andrew deciding, presumably he, yeah, y I would have been very surprised had he not cast Dig Through Time. Mm -hmm. Was there any reason for him not to right there? He was thinking about it. One reason not to is if he is worried about exiling a card that he would then want to use Jason. Mm -hmm. But I this is going to be a game that's pretty tight on mana. I don't see Andrew affording to, to leave up two mana and then just leave up two mana again. So it looks like... Mantis Rider, I'm not sure what the second card he took is, but Mantis Rider, very good against Four Color Rally. Four Color Rally is fantastic at clogging up the ground and not letting you ever attack, but Mantis Rider doesn't care about that at all. No, and it starts giving Andrew a, a clock. You know, he's he's got to apply some pressure, though Radiant Flames what about is, that Radiant Flames? is an interesting <laughs> draw. So Husk, if you cast Radiant Flames, and Andrew actually has a second red here with a Bloodstained Mire, mm -hmm. if you cast Radiant Flames for two... Or three, I guess. Yeah, you, you would cast Radiant Flames for three. You lose your Soulfire Grandmaster. Husk eats everything else, so you don't gain that much life. Mm -hmm. But then Husk is by itself, and you get to cast a Fiery Impulse on the Husk at during like Owen's upkeep, for example. The downside with all that is you tap four mana, and if Owen has found a collected company, then things can go somewhat poorly. Does Andrew have a... No, he does not have a Dress in hand, or enough lands to actually try to take a peek and then do all of this. Yeah, the unfortunately, the, the that was one of the downsides of casting Dig, is he, he had to exile the dress, he had to exile everything. So mm -hmm. the Jace is limited in, in what it can do this turn. I uh, just meant in his hand. I wasn't yeah. sure if maybe he potentially could have had that. If he has one more land, he gets to do all that whole thing, but see if the way is clear. And Andrew is one mana short of playing uh, Disdainful Stroke. Though, 
This attack will so far going to master means he's going to cast radio. Blast. Yeah. There's just like no way around that. Or at least very little way. There, it's possible <laughs> that, that Owen blocks in such a manner that Andrew doesn't mind it. But the interesting thing about this is had he just cast the Radiant Flames, I think he would have gained more life than if he attacked. So maybe he's trying to set something up with Fiery Impulse. So Hus gets in front of that, maybe gets in front of that Soulfire Grandmaster. I mean, if you're Owen here, your alarm bells are going off. How's, how, you know, sketchy is this attack? He's got to be thinking of Radiant Flames. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there, there are potential blocks that that a, a, a spot removal spell do mess up. Like if Owen blocks with a Catacomb Sifter and then Andrew has, I guess, like a Fire Impulse mm -hmm. because the Fire Impulse currently doesn't have Spell Mastery. But, yeah, I would be suspicious for sure. Yeah, so it looks... Look, Andrew got a bonus there. That was the sifter that got yeah, targeted it was by Jace. It was ticked down, so Andrew just gets to gain a bunch of life right there, crack a land, and he's gonna. Do you think he's still gonna fire it off right here? I think so. I, I, it seems like this is an advantageous turn to do that. Yeah, so that was some nice value that uh, Andrew was able to pick up right here, but here goes one, two, three. Radiant Flames. And if not for that, that Nantuko husk, <laughs> Andrew would have gained a lot of life. So Owen likes what he found at the top of his deck, so he no longer needs to sack anymore, or rather, scry anymore. Nantuko husk is going to eat the Visionary, the Catacomb Sifter, the Scion. Owen's still going to gain six off this Radiant Flames, though. Mm -hmm. So Kunio goes up to 24. And a pass back to Owen. So do you think here we're going to see the, the husk I think die? I think Andrew's going to keep up Disdainful Stroke. Basically what happens here is he's going to wait and keep up Disdainful Stroke. And if Owen taps out for a creature, I Andrew can use Fire Impulse in response. He doesn't need to do it right away. The husk by itself is not a huge threat. And if not, just counter something like a Collected Company or, or a Rally the Ancestors? Exactly. And if Owen passes with all his mana up, I think Andrew's just going to untap and then on his turn cast the Fiery Impulse, leaving up Disdainful Stroke the whole time. He just really doesn't want Owen to land a Collected Company. Yeah, so some nice sequencing by Andrew Cunio gives him a lot of optionality this turn. And that Nantuko Husk is going to come at Jace. He's down to five. Yeah, and it's awesome to see, th you know, two great players playing against each other because they're both playing around a, a lot of different cards. Mm -hmm. And look, Andrew's not taking the opportunity to cast Fiery Impulse yeah. there. Well, now that he has all his mana again, what do you think are the options for him? Oh, there you go. He, so he decided to not play Mana Spider. He's just going to pass the turn. He's going to Disdainful Stroke the, the company, uh, mm -hmm. as we've come in kind of expend expecting. Yeah, and he's going to take this turn also to take care of the Nantuko Husk and clear out all of Owen's board. Reflector Mage Jace and the Grim Harrow spec in Owen's hand. So here comes the Harrow Specs. And also here comes the Jace. And so Andrew can kill them both. He can start by killing the Harrowspex. That's the one you want to kill first, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. And then he can minus his own Jace to kill Owen's Jace. And Owen can't be feeling great about this. He could also just cast Roast and take up Jace towards the ultimate. I think that's what he might do right here. Roast takes care of that Jace. Mantis Rider. And now he has a serious clock here. Yeah, and, and Andrew's dealt with every threat Owen's played, including a collected company, including a rally that Owen never even got a chance to play. And Owen does have Visionary plus Reflector Mage, but that's still not that close to, to, to you know, pressuring Andrew. Yeah, and Reflector Mage is going to be able to stop that Mantis Rider for a couple of turns, but still, things are looking not great for Owen, and, and Andrew's firmly taking the driver's seat right here. Like, even if Owen Reflector Mage is the Mantis Rider... Andrew can just plus Jace to make Reflector Mage an 03. So mm -hmm. I, I like Owen's play of just playing a Jace. Looks like Andrew found a land. Yeah, and he might be casting uh, either Radiant Flames or Fire Impulse. Yeah, it looks like it was a... Maybe, yeah, it was a Fiery Impulse to take care of that Jace. The Mantis Rider gets in again for three. And Andrew could have cast Radiant Flames for two, killing Jace and Visionary and not his own Mantis Rider, but one reason to wait is to... Keep that I in the bank for later. Owen just drew a pretty good one, though. Mm -hmm. Th this could this could break the game wide open. 
Especially with Andrew, no cards in hand, so he knows a way he's clear in that sense. So that gives Owen... <laughs> Owen's got some, some interesting incentives here. On the one hand, if he casts Rally, because the card he drew, mm -hmm. during Andrew's like upkeep, for example, or, or on Owen's main phase even, he knows it's going to resolve, he knows that he's going to draw a bunch of cards and, and get some Elvish Visionaries back and whatnot. If he waits, he could maybe do lethal, but then o Andrew might draw a counterspell. So I think the Rally is going to be too good for him not, not to just do it immediately. Especially knowing that Andrew's going to prepare for that rally. And like you, you said, you'd let him see oh, one more card. There's still a Catacomb Sifter in Owen's graveyard. So let's see if we can... Yeah, let's see if we can get, get that Catacomb Sifter in in play. It was a nice try, but Owen, uh, Owen can't get away with leaving Catacomb Sifter <laughs> in his graveyard. <laughs> Either way, Owen gets to draw cards off Grim Harrispex, draw cards off Elvish Visionary, have double husk, he gets a lot of value out of this rally. There it is. All right, Owen finishes <laughs> sifting through his graveyard, gets that into play, <laughs> gets a token. The only thing is missing is Zulaport Cutthroat here. And see, this is one of the advantages of the rally deck. Look, Andrew just uh, answered all of Owen's cards. Uh, Owen had nothing. One rally, and all of a sudden, Owen draws something like seven or eight cards and gets to scry a million times. Yeah, this is going to be excellent for Owen. There's so many. This is, this is at the point where all the triggers on the stack. Let's see what... Owen wants to do. And here's where you stack like scries plus Grim Harrispex triggers so you can like scry first to try to find a good card and then draw that mm -hmm. card. Let's see, so one mana looks like a cut. It's gonna take care of that Mantis Rider. Owen having the rare opportunity to leave a rally in his graveyard because <laughs> it, it exiles uh, when, it's cast, when it's cast, but getting duress means that one gets to sit there and maybe he'll get to flash it back with Jace. So that Elvish Visionary is going to come in and crunch against Jace, and now he's going to pass back the turn to Andrew Cuneo. And even though it looks like, oh, Owen just passed the turn, Owen still has the ability with Husk, Harrispex, and Sifter to, to draw a card off all of his different cards. He can then wait on his upkeep and tap Jace to flip, to flip Jace and... Uh, you know, the Planeswalker stays in play, and then can flash back Rally. I think Andrew's going to start with a Radiant Flames here, or is he going to... He, no, he's just going to cast Dig Through Time. Yeah, so Andrew's going to cash in that Jace, and, and that is a really cool trick that you can do with a four-color Rally deck, being able to keep the Jace through having to exile it to Rally the Ancestors when you just get to flip it. Very nice interaction right there. So here goes Andrew exiles a big chunk of his graveyard. Let's see what he can find. So if you're Andrew here, what is... You know, what are the two cards that you're hoping to most find in the top eight? Um, I think that you, you need a counterspell to, to counter the next rally, which is you know is coming. Mm -hmm. Maybe a removal spell for Jace. I guess he already drew a Fiery Impulse. I honestly don't know if Andrew has a pair of cards here that really get him back into this, though. So Andrew did see a lot of cards. There's Rose, Kalidas, Duras, but yeah, like you just said, it's you know that the second rally's coming. You do have a way to get rid of that Jace, but Owen got so much value with this rally just now. Yeah. Andrew cast Dig Through Time, and he drew way less cards than, than, <laughs> than Owen when o for Owen casting rally. Thing is, even though Andrew's looking at a Kalidus, Kalidus doesn't actually do very much. You know that if you cast Kalidus, Owen's just going to respond by sacrificing all, all his creatures that mm -hmm. are relevant. And then untap, and having drawn so many cards, he's going to have Murderous Cutter Reflector Mage. So you could potentially do that and hope that he doesn't draw it. Is like, is that is that a reasonable thing you can expect at this point of the game? Just play like he's not going to get it. It might be Andrew's best chance. That looks like what he's <laughs> going for, but I, I just don't think it's a very high percentage chance. It sure. might be his highest percentage chance of the game. You're right. Yeah. So Andrew takes the Kalidas and. Uh, And he took a Pluto Delta so he can cast the Fire Impulse in his hand. Mm -hmm. This is going to prompt Owen to really start going through his deck but with Catacomb Sifter and Grim Harspex. So first Scry doesn't like it, draws a Flooded Strand. Second Scry also doesn't like it, draws another land. Owen can also do, if he wants, sacrifice a creature, Scry. If he puts it on the bottom, sack another creature, Scry, just keep stacking draws mm -hmm. on the bottom. But either way, he's going to get a bunch of scries and a bunch of draws and, and presumably find enough stuff that he's going to be able to go off again on his next turn. He found a Reflector Mage.
So that Kalita's still on the stack and Owen still deciding what to do with all his creatures. Looks like the dig through time actually didn't get exiled, so Andrew's supposed to exile that if that's the same one he flashed back. I don't think he discarded one prior to Jace, so that looks like that should be. Another stack, another draw, the draw is an Antuka Husk. And all of Owen's creatures minus the Jace and the Scion are going to get exiled via Rally on Owen's upkeep, so he does want to sacrifice them all in response to Kalidus. Mm -hmm. So he no longer gets to scry anymore, this time he just gets to sack all the creatures. He did find a copy of Duress right there. So Kuni's going to crack that polluted Delta, this is going to allow him to kill that Jace right now. There's a Smoldering Marsh for him. And killing Jace again gives him a chance, it might mean that Owen can't find another, another rally here. And Ra Owen's actually found Duress, Duress, Reflector Mage, and Intuko Husk, which none of those cards are named Rally of the Ancestors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so even though Andrew's not in great shape, it's not just over, and, and Andrew does get a zombie out yeah, for, he for gets his a trouble. He gets a little bit of value. That zombie is not, you know, Owen being at 11 life, that zombie's not insignificant. So Owen finds Murderous Cut. This can take care of the Kalitas. Owen drew kind of a lot of lands off all those triggers. He mm -hmm. didn't see any collected companies or any rallies. I still think Owen's in good shape here, but... Things could be worse for Andrew. Maybe he's maybe he's managed to get himself into a position where with a few m lucky top decks he can get back into the game. So Owen Turnwald bounces Kalidas, Nantuka Husk comes down. Andrew untaps Kalidas that he cannot play currently and a duress. So you have your choice of duresses or murderous cut. Yeah, and cuts I think they're pretty clear choice just because you know Owen has two duresses. Your counter spells are bad draws. That's fine. Every other card you draw, you're just going to play. Was there a chance that Owen maybe wanted to cut the Kalidas and bounce the zombie? Andrew had no cards in hand. Yeah, I mean there, there is a good chance th of that. Owen may have felt that the double reflector mage was going to give him enough opportunity to just keep bouncing Kalidas, but long term, it might it, that might have been a lot better value because now Owen... If he uses Reflector Mage on that zombie, then Kalidus is coming back down, and Owen's actually just on all lands and duresses. This right. game could actually go in Cuneo's favor here. Yeah, so Owen's draw for the turn was another polluted delta. He's kind of flooding a little bit, and then Tuka Husk is going to eat that Scion and is going to be able to eat that uh, zombie token. But he still doesn't have very much going on in his hand. No, and, and you know, if you're Andrew, you're feeling like you've got a reprieve here. You've got a second wind. You, you were losing badly, but mm -hmm. you're actually potentially winning this game. So you here comes Kalidas. And you know Owen's going to Reflector Mage this, but Andrew's at 21. Owen draws oh another land. Oh, Swamp. So Reflector Mage, you get attacked down to 4, down to 17. Next turn, maybe you do nothing. Then Owen attacks you down to 11. And if you replay Kalidas, all of a sudden, what's, what's Owen's yeah, game what's plan? Yeah, what's going to do? Correct. And at this point, Owen doesn't know anything in Andrew's hand, correct? He only has one card left. Yeah, Andrew just has the card he drew, and Owen uh, doesn't know what that is. Surprising, Owen drew so many cards off of that Grim Hair Specs, but the fact that they're all lands. <laughs> oh, he just chooses to pass back right here. And I think Owen might be waiting because he, he comes to the conclusion that bouncing Kalidus for two turns is just not going to let him pressure Andrew enough to finish the game. That he might as well just wait. And if he draws like another rally or another another way to, 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 to go off against Andrew, then Reflector Mage. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, Andrew m might want to attack with Kalidus here. If he attacks with Kalidus and Owen blocks with Husk and sacks Reflector Mage, Kalidus mm -hmm. immediately makes a zombie. Then Kalidus can eat the zombie and we get bigger. So with this much mana, I think you just want to be smashing with Kalidus. Yeah, that seems like a good play. That's uh, It's funny because you forget that Kalidus has a second ability, but he can definitely do that. Yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's it's an ability that doesn't come up, and the ones that don't come up are the ones that uh, you, you, end up <laughs> you end up sometimes forgetting. And part of the reason, uh, as the chat actually just mentioned, uh, Owen's not sacrificing his Fectons. He's scried multiple cards he doesn't want to the bottom, so sacking lands to thin doesn't really actually thin. That's the cool thing about the, the four-color rally deck. You 
you know, you play a lot of fetch lands in the deck, but you have to be careful at a later point in time. Wow, it looks like Owen found another land. Yikes. At a certain point in time, you have to be careful about once you've cracked a fetch land, you don't want to... Yeah, he's scried how many cards to the bottom, at least? Yeah. Four or five? Actually, both players are just drawing lands. <laughs> Andrew draws a duress <laughs> and two lands. Though I suppose it is actually true. If Andrew attacks, Owen can just double block, and then the Kalidus does end up dying. Uh-oh. Jace could break the symmetry here. Mm -hmm. This is... This is this is an actual card. This is something that can really swing the game. Now Andrew's back to needing a top deck, and Owen is going to wisely lead with Duress. So Duress takes a Duress. Do you think Andrew should have cast his Duress to take Owen's Duress, rather than <laughs> have Owen cast his <laughs> Duress to take Andrew's Duress? Depends on, on if you want to send a message or receive <laughs> a message. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now that Owen knows, Kuni just has a land in hand. Oh, he's going to choose to go for the Reflector Mage this turn. Kalita's back in hand. And part of the reason for that is that Owen is planning on potentially going off next turn, so we might as well do this, hit for four, and then force Andrew to, to draw something on this turn. And now Andrew's got multiple problems to deal with. Mm -hmm. So Andrew's going to crack that Polluted Delta. Does Owen have any Zilpor Cutthroats in this graveyard? He doesn't. He, he, doesn't, didn't, right? he didn't have one before. Mm -hmm. But... Owen still has that Rally of the Ancestors that got duressed previously, mm -hmm. so he, he does have a, a really game-ending option to, to flash back right, with Jace. Right, so it's this turn for Kunio. He needs to take care of that Jace or it's going to be game over. Yes, if Andrew doesn't deal with the Jace or draw a counterspell, but the thing is actually drawing a counterspell doesn't help. Owen has another duress. Do you think Owen will just snap that dress off just to make sure that the coast is clear before going off or something like that? Yeah, for sure. There's just it, It's not getting you any other value, and if you're going to win the game by casting Rally, you, you really should Might just cast well. Dress first. Well, Kunio give him himself the best chance by cracking that land and hoping to draw something good right here. He needs an answer for the Jace right now. <sighs> it's a disdainful stroke. Which, <laughs> as much as that does answer Rally, Owen's going to cast Dress. Zulaport Cutthroat is the draw for him. Here you go. Duress and Andrew knows there's no way out from here. That Jace is just going to flash back that Rally the Ancestors and Owen is going to push it to a game two. Three even. Three. <laughs> but uh, uh, Owen doesn't mind because he was down a game. So he, he the fact that uh, they, they get to play another game is just all good news for Owen. How much do you think there are sideboarding changes given that... Um, they know deckless this time around. At this point in the tournament, it doesn't change a ton for for Owen and uh, Andrew because they both played against each other so much that even though they get ha have access to full deck lists, uh, first of all, these players probably knew each other's full deck list to begin with because they discussed both of them <laughs> because they were on the same team. And second of all, they're both playing decks that you know you've kind of seen what these decks are capable of. You know what Rally's going to do, and you know what the common answers to Rally are. So. I don't think we're going to see any particularly different sideboarding because of deckless. It's not like the last round where we saw Owen play against the Mardu with red deck, or Mardu with green deck, rather, that has a lot of kind of unconventional sideboarding choices, including Marshall Sutcliffe's favorite card, Tainer Memory. Marshall. Did, did I miss anything? You did. You, you missed a very exciting game, unless no, you were I, I uh, watching, watching it, it elsewhere. Yeah, I was watching it. There's a, they actually have um, a little TV, actually a big TV set up in the section over there, and I was sitting with, uh, well, a lot of the both of these pros friends um, Brock Parker's over there as well as uh, Huey Jensen Reed Duke Chapin's over there too and they're all kind of dissecting the plays and that was a really crazy game game it two it was it, it, you know you saw Andrew deal with all of Owen's threats on pretty much a one for one basis yeah and get Owen down to like no cards except for like a reflector mage and an elvish visionary but then owen top deck a rally and the deck kind of does what it does it did i mean he even but then owen stalled out for a really <laughs> oh long right. time it Actually, wasn't game over. It looked like it was just going to be game, but instead, uh, Owen, you know, drew a bunch of lands. Andrew drew a Kalidus or found one off dig. Eventually, uh, Andrew did, in fact, you know, fail to capitalize on that those extra five or six turns, and Owen found a Jace, which found uh, which was able to rally, which was able to end the game. So, which team are you on? Team Cuneo, Team Orat. I like both of these guys quite a bit. 
All right, non-answer, but let's Sorry, I, I, I don't really <laughs> want to answer. I don't know. I'm not on either of the teams. Do you, are you asking me who I think is going to win? No, which team are you on? Yeah, I'm not on either team. Marshall's the Switzerland of coverage <laughs> is a neutral party. We're all the Switzerland of coverage. Uh, yeah, 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 right. <laughs> Good point. I agree. <laughs> All right, so one game to decide it. That's uh, that's how we like it here out at the GP circuit. Two fantastic players, two solid standard decks, and uh, one person's going to get that trophy. If Owen wins, that'll mean two Grand Prix, two standard Grand Prix, won by Rally. You yes. Know, re reduke <laughs> Owen's teammate, not only on his Pro Tour testing team, the you know the Pantheon, also his his team for Team Grand Prix. So. Uh, Reduke won one Grand Prix Oakland with a rally deck. So let's see if he can follow in his teammates' footsteps and win h here in Houston. Though g watching Andrews get his first win would be pretty cool too. It would be really cool. It is crazy how long you can go playing Magic professionally and not get that trophy, right? I mean, Andrews had a very successful career as a professional Magic player, but. Yeah, I, I can't speak mm -hmm. to specifically that, but but I, I agree <laughs> that uh, Andrew is a fantastic player, and and it it would be awesome to see him hoist the trophy. Luis actually has a room for his trophies in the in the new house that he bought, with his winnings. Well done. He managed to fit a lot of uh, a, lo <laughs> a, a lot of uh, a lot of must be nices in one it sentence. It was a layer there. cake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like we have a keep from both players, so let's get on to the third and deciding game here at GP Houston. $10,000 and that nice shiny trophy sitting there waiting for the winner of this one game of magic between Andrew Cuneo and Owen Turnwald. Owen's currently ranked first in the world. And if he loses in the finals, well, he'll still be just ranked first yeah, by a lot. By but a lot, yeah. otherwise, it would be, he'd be ranked even more first <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if he wins. Yeah, Owen looking to put a run together for player of the year and certainly padding his stats here. He's actually used up all six of his GP slots. You know, you, you can count your pro points from your highest six GP finishes in a season, but he's got some points to spare in there. And he's certainly going to be replacing one of his scores here, one way or the other. Cuneo's got a Jace Friends Prodigy. He's on the play. He gets to play it straight away here. Looks like Owen's going to get to match that with his own Jace, though. Okay. The chat busily looking for a way for this game to end in a draw so that we can get a game four. Oh, I'd like that. I don't believe that is possible given the deck lists. I will say I was rooting for Owen in that last game because <laughs> I, I wanted to come back and cover a game <laughs> three between these two. I just love watching this level of magic. Okay, Jay's fight here. As own turn wall plays his own copy and then passes the turn back to Cuneo. Cuneo finds... Did I see that correctly? He does have a Mantis Rider, but he currently doesn't have an untapped red. He has a Needle Spire, the red-white okay. tap land. But he found a Duress on top. Is that what he wants to see right here? Uh, the second Duress is a little less one. exciting because Owen, Owen's deck has really, really powerful instants and sorceries. doesn't have lots of them. So Andrew is going to hol hold on to Duress, but also Dig Through Time, another card you don't really want to see in multiples until uh, much later in the game. Right, so Rally, the only choice there. For Andrew Cuneo. And yeah. that's the perfect dress. You know, when, yeah. you, t when you take a rally, it's a card you're, you're worried about, and you leave them with no other powerful targets. So you did hit, but you, you're, you're not having to worry about anything else. I mean, Husk, Cutthroat, and Reflector Mage are, are all fine cards, but Andrew knows that he's not going to get hit by like a collected company necessarily. All right, Andrew passes the turn back to Turton Walls, draws his card for the turn. He finds an Elvish Visionary. Fine pickup for him here. He's going to start by looting with his Jace. And and again, Owen could flip Jace. We've seen this over the course of the weekend where people manage their graveyard size very specifically in order to not flip Jace if you don't want to. So Owen is not going to sacrifice his fetch land first. He's just going to flip Jace or use Jace, not flip it, because he really wants to find Collected Company or another rally. He's going to discard a Zulaport Cutthroat here. And I believe play an Intuko Husk here, because he, if he wanted to play. He, he would not be able to play Re Reflector Mage by sacrificing Fluid Delta no. because he couldn't get an untapped Prairie Stream.
So there it is, Nantuko Husk. Pass to turn back to Cuneo. Cuneo does have the opportunity to flip Jace if he can get another card in the graveyard here. And Cuneo, like is yeah, he's going to lead off by putting that, that card. <laughs> it's got Painful Truths, which will be a fourth card, which it indicates that he wants to flip Jace here, presumably plussing on Nantuko Husk. That is a little dangerous, though. You know, Nantuko Husk might be an O2, but if Owen goes like Catacomb Sifter and another creature, he could kill the Jace potentially. Though, that is a little difficult to imagine. Yeah, yeah, it has to be. Because he sees Faithful there. Which is potentially not even an Owen's deck. I, would, I, I right. would imagine he would be boarding those out for murderous cuts. Okay, so Painful Truths resolves. Jace gets flipped. Still a land drop to go here for Cuneo. And he just passes the turn back. We've seen this pretty consistently with Painful Truths. You basically take the turn off. But on the following turn, you're often set up for really great stuff. Let's see what Owen can do here. Doesn't have any targets for Reflector Mage. Has Elvish Visionary. We don't really want to play a two-mana spell this turn. Has another Husk. Has a, ta has a Prairie Stream, which is not going to be tapped anymore. I assume Owen's going to lead off with Jace, though. <laughs> Owen could... No, he could loot, loot with Jace and sack it to Husk in response. We actually saw him defeat Chapman Sim by doing that during an attack step. Oh, that's pretty cool. Get an extra creature off of Rally, but uh, I don't think Owen's in a spot where that, that's that interesting. He also, he can Rally for two, so he could loot with Jace, sack it in response, discard an Elvish Visionary, Rally for two, getting back Cutthroat, Jace, Elvish Visionary, except he doesn't have double white so no, that whole yet. line of play <laughs> out, the, out the door just dissipated in front of our eyes okay he's just going to settle for using up his mana in the best way he can by playing another antuco husk and passing the turn back to cuneo again cuneo's just cast painful truths that last turn look at his hand he's got seven cards in hand and he is ready to rumble okay he's got the the needle spires going down there as well as a shambling vent here's a flood strand now for cuneo he's going to kick Jace in the upward direction and just pass. Interesting. W do you think that Andrew is setting up for a Jace ultimate with his ticking up of Jace? No, I don't think he is, Luis. I, <laughs> I hate being the one to disappoint you over and over. <laughs> no, you don't. You love it. I do not. I, I want to see you happy, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I just it's I honestly take this my one away from I, here. I'm trying to just evaluate the game in the most professional and efficient way possible. And one of the possibilities is that Jace <laughs> telepath him down will use his third ability. That is possible. Uh, so here comes Nantuko Husk attacking Jace and significantly reducing the ability to do that. And two things have happened here. One is that Owen found a Catacomb Sifter. The other is that he's not using his Jace. He's sitting on Jace and waiting to, to decide whether he wants it in the graveyard or he wants it flipped. Okay. So Cuneo, nothing for this turn. He's passed. He, he played a land. Does he have a dig through time maybe? He does have a dig through time. Okay. And... If Owen has a Dispel, then this would be a pretty good turn to cast it. But oh, given that Owen sided in Duresses, it's unclear whether he has room to side in Duresses and Dispels, okay. and if so, how many. So Andrew doesn't actually have a red card right now to play with that Needle Spires, but he's going to cast Dig and maybe hope to find a Fiery Impulse, or at least represent one so that Owen doesn't set use Jace in response. I definitely saw a painful truth and a disdainful stroke in there. Good that's amount of lands as well. It's actually setting Andrew up fairly well. That is what he took. A lot of lands on the battlefield for Cuneo here in game three. He's drawn a bunch of extra cards. He's already cast Dig Through Time and Painful Truth, and he's not dead yet, so that's good business. He's got multiple copies of Painful Truth in his hand now. Mantis Rider not looking great here. It, I mean, it is a card that can apply pressure well against Rally, but when you are you don't play Mantis Rider until turn six or seven, at that point, Rally has a bunch of cards that are essentially lethal, and you really have to watch out for those. So yeah, Cuneo's going to be pretty worried about Reflector Mage here too, right? Yeah. Like whatever he decides to play here, he's going to assume that there's a good chance it ends up back in his hand. So Cuneo's actually in a tough spot. Owen is forcing Cuneo to to kind of deal with just this whole board of threats without r ever presenting Rally or company. And Owen just sitting on Jace means that Cuneo needs to either represent removal by leaving up red, which he has, and keep up mana the whole time, or Owen could just flip Jace and potentially Rally. 
Looks like he's going to lead with a duress, which is good news for, for Owen here. Yeah, he's going to whiff on this duress. It's just a visionary and two reflector mages. Andrew with the 2 2 split of Shambling Vents and Needle Spires. Yep. Kind of interesting. So one of the husks gets shrunk by Jace. Can we see a Soulfire Grandmaster? No. A replacement Jace and then the Soulfire Grandmaster. All right. So Kay. Sunio looking to build this board back up here. Owen it just feels like Owen has a lot of damage at the ready here. Owen has to have very close to lethal here because he can... Two he husks? He's got two husks, and he can discard a Reflector Mage to Jace to bounce one of Andrew's blockers. So he knows a husk is getting through, and he has a rally. He doesn't have the, f the second white, but he's got five mana with the Eldrazi Sign, or, and if he draws a second white, he's going to have five. Plus, he can dump a Reflector Mage into the graveyard with Jace. So wow. if Owen draws a white source here, does he, does he do it? Let's see. Andrew blocks the 2-2 two two Jace, or 2-2 two two Husk, and leaves the other one unblocked. And Owen... He did. Drew the white. He did draw the white mana. So that was a canopy vista. Owen, so Owen has to flip Jace, though. He can't send it to the graveyard. He needs to flash back the rally. And Husk is a zero, and so eight creatures need to be sacrificed. But actually, there's a little per cut through it. So Husk is a zero. It eats right. the three other creatures in play. So Husk becomes a six. Rally gets back three... Four, five creatures. So that should be enough. So that's eight from the... Well, the cutthroat won't be in for the first three, though, right? Yeah, it'll be in for the, the last five, though. Yeah. I th wow, we could be seeing Owen Turtonwald win his fourth GP here. I, I think so. I think Owen's just... You know, he's got the perfect information because Andrew's tapped out. He's got to be adding up all these cards and deciding, like, all right, I, I guess this will, this will do it. Because he has to loot with Jace, discard Reflector Mage, flip Jace... Minus Jason Rally the Ancestors. There's Reflector Mage hitting the cast thing rally. Here. Bounce Soulfire Grandmaster for good form, though you could bounce the Jace either one, and then attack with the two husks and one of them's getting through. <laughs> so now both husks are two two, filling up his graveyard here. Each of them gets pumped, and here we go. Flashback Rally. Is this going to be it? Is this Owen Turtonwald's time for number four? I think so. Andrew blocks the... Attack you with both. There's math to be done here, but it looks like Owen is about to lock it up. Yes. Block like that. Sack everything to Husk. Trigger, 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 all these triggers. And that's it. Owen Turtonwald <laughs> wins the GP. Number four in the books for Owen. Congratulations to him and a great run by Andrew Cuneo as well. But Owen is the one who's going to take the trophy here in Houston. That's going to do it for the finals.